I think that between the three main classes in D2, I've probably played Titan the least. It's not way far behind my Hunter and Warlock numbers, but yeah. Honestly though, that might have to change because I've been fiddling around with a few Titan builds for PvP lately and no joke, been having some of the most fun I've had in weeks. I mentioned on Twitter the other day that I've actually got two Arc 3.0 builds for the Titan. I'm going to share one with you today, which perfectly shows off what I feel the Titan power fantasy truly is. The best news about that build is that it takes multiple exotics well, which we'll get into in a bit. The other Titan build, I'm going to be honest, I also really enjoy it, but it very much goes against the traditional power fantasy of the Titan. So real quick, even though that second build is way off brand for Titans, would you still want to see it? If you want a second vid, on the weird titan build please let me know by writing show me the anti-titan titan or something like that down in the comment section but in the meantime titan build number one what kind of players will enjoy this build while your teammates are taking too long trying to come up with a plan do you simply break down the door with your face and barrel over the competition do you enjoy solving problems with your fists of course by problems i mean other people and of course by solving i mean destroying you do Perfect. Before we dive into the nitty gritty, allow me to show you the MO of today's build in action. And pause. Rewind. Okay, here we go. Step one, run down the enemy. They will no doubt shoot you, but with the tools available, you should be able to close the gap. Step two, slide. You're doing this both to close the gap and gain extra protection, maybe. Again, more on that later. Step three, damage with shotgun. Depending on how close you are, you may flat out get a one hit shotgun kill at this point. If you do, great. If you don't, that's okay because... Step four, quickly melee. If you do it fast enough, even though you're in the middle of a shotgun blast, you should still be able to pull off a seismic strike, AKA the shoulder charge. Again, if they were weakened by the shotgun and not flat out killed, the shoulder charge will close the final gap between you and your opponent and lock up the kill. Here's what we got going on under the hood of the build to ensure the highest chance of success. The core is built around two of the most fun arc aspects ever, Juggernaut and Knockout. If you're unfamiliar, Knockout, critically wounding a target or breaking their shield will bump up your melee range and melee damage for a short time. Defeating targets with a melee attack will give you health regen and make you amplified. The health regen on a melee kill is arguably my favorite part of knockout. Odds are that after you've closed the gap on whoever you're tagging with your shotgun shoulder charge combo, you'll probably be a little dinged up. Knockout gets you that health back and puts you in the fight, making it more likely that you can pull off a 2v1 or even a 3v1. I should also mention that for all the moments where you're not shotgun shoulder charge combo, somebody knockout is huge triggering the extra range and damage on your melee by just breaking an enemy's shield it's great even in a straight up 1v1 gunfight up close no shoulder charging at all knockout can get you out of a pinch in a flash then you got the peanut butter to knockout's jelly juggernaut with full class ability energy and after sprinting for a short time you gain a frontal shield that blocks incoming damage when that frontal shield breaks your class ability energy goes bye bye also and i quote while amplified the shield blocks significantly more damage before breaking. Eh, I think that probably could have been worded a little bit better. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, here we are in a private lobby. My boy Trash runs at me with his regular juggernaut shield and it can take about 50 damage before breaking. You'll notice that when I break his jug shield with a 140 RPM hand cannon, it takes two shots and it doesn't bleed through into the Titan's health. You'll find that's the case with any damage you throw at the Juggernaut Titan, by the way. Take a look here. I shoot my buddy with a hothead rocket launcher. And again, even though the shield only has 50 health, there's no bleed through from the rocket. Kind of weird, right? Anyway, because a 120 RPM hand cannon can deal about 50 damage on a regular body shot, it's fairly ideal to test out the Juggernaut shield. Again, normal Juggernaut shield, 50 damage, AKA one shot from my 120 RPM hand cannon, and shield go bye-bye. Now, remember the text. When amplified, it blocks significantly more damage. When you read that, you might assume that your jug shield gets more health. But hey, when you assume you make an ass out of you and me, what it actually does is give your jug shield a little bit of DR, aka damage resist. Remember, I was dealing 50 damage per shot and I could break it in one clean shot? My bud gets amped up and charges again. Now my hand cannon does 34 damage on the first shot. I need to shoot his jug shield twice to break it now. Not too shabby. 
considering knockout will make you amplified on just one melee kill, you can use the extra DR to make your enemy shoot your jug shield a little bit more while you close the gap. Keep in mind that the jug shield will only protect you from the front. It's still very possible to be shot and killed from behind, even with your jug shield up. When your juggernaut shield breaks, your class ability energy is depleted. Unfortunate, but a fair trade. Therefore, in order to make sure we have the best class ability cooldown time possible, I prefer rolling with the brand new thruster ability. It's got a default cooldown of 30 seconds compared to 32 on rally barricade and 40 on towering barricade. Not to mention that thruster is just an awesome ability. Our Titan build today ain't one that you're going to find hiding behind a barricade. It's all about fast movement, shotgunning, charging, and ankle breaking. Even though thruster can only be activated on the ground, it's still great. Even if you never activate it manually, which you definitely can from time to time, it'll still be there on the back burner, helping you via fueling your juggernaut shield. Okay, now's a perfect time to try and answer the big question. What exotic do you want to pair with your build? The good news is that several will work and you can pick whichever one is the most appealing to you. I've got a whopping five options for you today, which are Antaeus Wards, Dune Marchers, MK44 Standicides, Heart of Inmost Light, and the Syntheseps. We're actually going to start off with the Synthos because even though they're great, they're not my preferred pairing for the build and I'd like to explain why. Synthos give extra melee lunge range and better melee damage when you're surrounded. As mentioned earlier though, my MO for the build is to open and weaken with a shotgun shot, then finish with a shoulder charge. In theory, you wouldn't need the extra melee damage from Synthos if the poor schmuck is already weakened from a mouthful of buckshot. Now that's not to say that Synthos can't be helpful in other ways. If you round the corner and find yourself in a full-on clump of enemies, you can just straight up open with a shoulder charge, which will kill on impact and then start blasting. Syntho damage when amped up by knockout will also deliver 296 damage on a regular punch. I wanted to find out if the extra melee range mentioned on the exotic perk applied to your shoulder charge range as well, i.e. do synthos make me lunge further. It's really hard to measure that shit, by the way. I tried in a private lobby by charging at one exact point over and over and measuring where exactly I landed. After doing it about 20 times both with and without synthos, I'm about 99% sure that they don't lengthen the range of your shoulder charge. Feel free to wear them for extra punching power, but again, they're not my favorite for the build. Dune Marchers are definitely a play if you enjoy both playing sixes and making people angry. Flying into a bunch of people and setting off a wave of chain lightning is an easy way to weaken everybody in the room all at once, which pretty much opens up the door for you and your teammates to finish off now squishy enemies with weak team shooting. The only downside is that unlike a few options on our list today, the Dune Marchers don't offer any additional protection while you're trying to close the gap on an enemy, which is what I enjoy. It does give slightly better sprint speed though, meaning you can close the gap a tiny bit quicker. Next, you got Heart of Inmost Light. I'd probably recommend rolling with the heart if you just don't know what other exotic to roll with for the build. While it doesn't give you extra damage protection while you're trying to close the gap, it does give you noticeably better cooldown times. Whenever you use any ability, the other two abilities get empowered, i.e. more potent, and better regen time. It's with a heavy heart, eh? You see what I did there? That I tell you that the Heart of Inmost Light does not make your Juggernaut Shield any stronger. Even when powered up by using any other ability, the Jug Shield will break at 50 damage again. Therefore, only use the Heart if your goal is better ability charge time, which definitely can come in handy. The final two options are my most preferred for this particular Titan build, Antaeus Wards and the MK44s. Let's start with Antaeus, which brings two things to the table. Thing one is a longer and better slide, and thing number two is the ability to reflect incoming damage while sliding. I love Antaeus for this build. Even though the window on reflecting damage is brief, it comes in handy all the time. Are you going to be deflecting golden gunshots and nova bombs left and right? No. But even if you're doing something as boring as reflecting a single hand cannon shot, that's still one bullet not damaging or weakening your Giga Chad Titan while they close the gap for a shotgun shoulder charge combo. Antaeus can keep you alive a smidge longer while closing the gap, coming in to help you stay alive even after your Juggernaut shield has been depleted. It's probably my number one favorite pick for the build, but let's not sleep on the final option, the MK44s. The exotic perk on the MK will give you an overshield when running around at full health, and yup, it does pair together with the Juggernaut shield. You can see as my friend runs around, he's getting a blue bar on top of his shield. That's the MK overshield kicking in before the Juggernaut shield even pops up. That means the Titan running at you is going to be that much beefier and harder to put down. It sounds like a great deal, and it is. My only beef with the MK is that it only kicks in when you're running at 
full health. Meaning if you've taken any chip damage at all, it's not going to kick in and you're essentially running around with no exotic. When it does work though, it works great. I'm just slightly more of a fan of the Antaeus wards for the build because it's going to provide me brief protection every time I slide at an enemy, no matter what my health bar is at. Moving on, I'll now show you the other parts of the build. So if you want to, you can copy it completely. Fragment wise, there's a few I like that you get to pick from, but right off the bat, I'll show you my main three. Spark of resistance, kind of a no brainer for me. When you're surrounded by combatants, you get more incoming DR. Even if that never procs for you though, it comes with a free plus 10 strength to improve my shoulder charge cooldown. Spark of recharge, get more melee and grenade recharge rate when critically wounded. Just an easy way to help out your melee recharge rate that you don't really need to think about too much. And spark of momentum, sliding over an ammo brick will auto reload your weapon and give a small amount of melee energy. Yeah, two methods of improving your melee regen rate, one passive, one active. There are other options on the table if you want, like Spark of Focus. After sprinting for a short time, your class ability regen is increased. I did a little testing on that bad boy, and while tempting at tier 10 Brazil and Utility Kickstart, which I intend on running, you only get two seconds shaved off your ability regen time. I'm guessing that the regen buff gets better the lower Brazil you have, and F that, I'm running high Brazil. Still an option, but two seconds shaved off for a minus 10 Brazil penalty? Eh, it's kind of iffy. Spark of Discharge, Arc Weapon Final Blows have a chance to create an ionic trace. If you happen to be rocking an arc shotgun like Sudden Death, you could get a few ionic traces, which are always nice to have. Finally, Spark of Feedback. Taking melee damage briefly improves your outgoing melee damage. Get hit, hit them back, and you get a plus 10 Brazil bump. Win-win. Pick whatever combination you feel that you would enjoy the most. And I don't know if this matters to you, but for grenade selection, I went flashbang on today's build. It won't always help you, but take a mental note that blind enemies are easier to close the gap on if you're picking up what I'm laying down. Armor mods and stat distribution. Should go without saying that the goal should be to try and hit tier 10 Brazil and tier 10 strength. On your gauntlets, I would highly recommend melee kickstart. Every time you land a shoulder charge, melee kickstart turns on and you've already got a reduced cooldown on your next charge. Likewise, utility kickstart on your titan mark. Even though you've got a fast cooldown already on your thrust ability, utility kickstart should help it come back even faster, meaning more juggernaut energy. Finally, if you can, try to pair the following two armor mods together. Quick charge on one piece of armor and radiant light on the other. Quick charge will bump up your shotgun ready speed and radiant light will give you a free extra 20 strength. Weapon-wise, honestly, any shotgun you feel comfortable with should be fine. Try to dig through your vault, actually, and see if you have a Wastelander, or I guess any shotgun, with slide shot. You're going to be sliding all around with this build anyway. Might as well bump up your gun performance while doing it. Final weapon, and this one might take you a while to grind for, but for the love of God, if you ever get a pure poetry hand cannon with well-rounded and swashbuckler, I'm begging you to pair it together with this build. I don't have one yet. I need better RNG. But on paper, this will be a sick combo, allowing you to easily land cross map two tap hand cannon headshots after landing just one shoulder charge and proccing swash. Please go forth and try this build out, especially if you're a titan main, but double especially if you're not a titan main. As someone who plays too little titan, I had a blast charging into people with this build in PvP. Embrace that power fantasy, bash a few heads together. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Big appreciation to those who do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on stream.